it's an absolute absolute privilege to be with you on this call and what a what a powerful teaching we had tonight with regards to resurrection from the dead this is one of those teachings that never ever takes only one small group one small group meeting this is one of those te teachings that always always escalate into multiple small group meetings because it's such an important it's such an important topic and uh, we were so privileged to um, have dr frost himself here to um, <laughs> to come and uh, uh, do the teaching for us tonight so um, welcome gail from strand francis from baden baden uh, rina from uh, poxburg uh, lee from krugersdorp Bonnie from Littleton. Welcome to the school, everyone. Kubis and Aleta from Secunda. Ananda from Cape Town. Um, it's an absolute privilege sharing with you. Tonight, we talk about resurrection from um, the dead. And um, we want to talk about how to facilitate this um, topic in a small group. And um, I trust that you've seen tonight, and I've just looked at the comments while Dr. Frost were busy, was busy with a, with a teaching. I just looked at the comments, and I could see that there are many of you that said, wow, this is a different take on a topic that I thought I know a lot on. Um, because this is such an important topic, it is, it is a topic that we need to spend the correct amount of time on. And um, especially in a, in a small group, we need to make sure that we encourage um, uh, discussion on this topic because this is the topic. I want you to, to just for one moment, and I don't want to sound like our previous president. I just want you to listen carefully because just for a little, little moment, just hear what I'm saying. Every person that gets lost along the way, Every person that commit their life to Jesus Christ, every person that dedicate their life's mission, their life's work to Jesus Christ, that accept his complete work on the cross, that falls by the wayside, that uh, people have different words that they use for that. I've, I've backslidden. I've, I've just uh, let it go a little. I've, I've gone back into the world. It doesn't matter. We're not say, I'm not saying this because I'm pointing at people and I'm, I'm belittling people. I'm saying this for the outcome that I want to show you with regards to this. People that understand this topic that Dr. Frost has so eloquently taught us tonight. People understand this topic. Not knowing, that, not believing in Jesus Christ is not an option anymore. Not knowing that the reason for you to be alive because this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. We want to, to be resurrected. We want to get a resurrected physical body. We want to go and, and live out in this life and into the eternal life. And this is part of it. And, and we need to, and, and I really think my opinion, what I'm saying now is just my opinion, so it's not important. But my opinion is this is one of the topics that we as the church don't teach on enough. That we as a church don't make sure that people understand good enough. And that's why a lot of people fall by the wayside. And um, how appropriate that this will be our last topic for this year. Resurrect, resurrection from the dead. This is our last topic from the year, uh, for the year. Can I, before I go into facilitating it, can I ask you that you will do yourself the honor, the favor, that you will just bless yourself within the next few days. Just go and watch this topic again. Just go watch this video again. If there's ever a video that you need to share, is the video that Dr. Frost just made on Facebook. If there's ever a video that you could share to your timeline, that is the video. Because this topic will change people's lives, will change people's hearts, it will draw people towards Christ more than most. It is just one of those topics. 
Are there any one of you that, that agree that this is an amazing topic? This is a topic that we should know more about. This is a topic that we should all major in. This is a topic, thank you, Charlene, I can see that. Um, this is a topic that we should know everything about. We should know these scriptures. And isn't it true that these are exactly the scriptures that we don't know? Thank you, Melipi. These are the scriptures that we actually don't know. <laughs> we, we know a lot of other scriptures, and we can quote a lot of scripture. But these scriptures are actually the ones that we should go and study and go and, and read in different um, uh, in, in, um, in, in the different um, languages and in the different, different Bibles. And, and the key is that we understand this topic because we should be able to talk about this topic and we should be able to talk to anyone on this topic. And we should be able to make conversation on this topic. And this topic should actually be our backup topic. If I don't know anything to do, if I don't know anything to talk about, this should be the topic to talk about. So let's pray together. Lord, we just come and we commit this, this little teaching that we have as, a, as an add-on for the facilitators around the topic of resurrection from the dead. Lord, we just come and we commit this little teaching to you. We come and we commit this teaching to you, Lord. Holy Spirit, come and help and assist us so that everyone will see how to go and talk about this topic, which angle to take on this topic when they go and sit in a small group. And Lord, that we can not alienate people, but that we can show them why we are Christians. Why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we telling people about Jesus Christ, Lord, because one of the cornerstones, one of the foundational things is the resurrected body of Christ. Lord, that is what we yearn for. That is what we work for. Lord, that is what we stand for. Lord, that is, we know that that is your gift, your promise for us. And we thank you that we can come and sit at your feet and talk about this topic tonight. Thank you for the, for the fact that we could have done this so many times this year. This is topic number 13 that we're dealing with since the, the moment that we decided to do a topic, an incorporate topic, topic on a Wednesday, Lord. This is number 13. Thank you, Lord, that we could endure with this. Thank you that this topic will be our last topic for 2020. We look forward to where we're going to kick off in 2021. Lord, we just commit this year to you and we say thank you for this year thank you for everyone on this call who are still here thank you for everyone that's still pressing in with you thank you for everyone that yearn to know how to better go and work in a group to know how to better go facilitate a group to know how to better go and, and stimulate com conversation communication around your love for us we thank you and we commit this meeting to you in jesus name amen sorry i nearly Kept on praying there for the rest of the evening. And uh, I should admit the people into the room as well. Um, what an amazing topic. And uh, thank you for uh, Patricia that tell me it's different translations. That is the word that I was looking for. By now you heard that I'm Afrikaans. That's why I'm doing the Afrikaans church on a Sunday morning at 10. And not the English church at, at 6. Um, and um, uh, I'm proud of being Afrikaans. But I'm working on my English. And one day when I'm all grown up. I will also um, command the language. But let's look at this, this topic. And, and as I said, this topic should be your fallback topic. As a facilitator, this is a topic that you should know more than most. Well, every one of you that's been on this call tonight, you know more than most on this topic. Have you ever heard someone talk about this topic ever before? Most probably, no. Most probably not. Because this is just one of those topics that we don't talk about in polite conversation. And this is actually the topic that should come up first. And the key is, when we go into, into the this, this small groups, and, and when you facilitate the small group around this topic, the, the key is to start with, why are we following Jesus Christ? What's the reason for us? What's your reason for following Jesus Christ? And just allow people to say one or two things with regards to the reason for them following Jesus Christ. What's the reason that I am a follower of Christ? 
What's your reason for being a follower of Christ? And just talk to people around that and allow people to talk about that. And then you tell them, but let's just go look at the cherry on the cake. Because most probably no one would have brought up this topic. But this topic is the cherry on the cake. Why we follow Christ. Why we are believers. Because this is what God has promised us. This is where we're going in. Where we're going into. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're going to experience. This is where, we, where we're going to be for eternity. And the key is that we need to understand this topic. And we need to understand um, uh, the scripture around this topic. And it, it actually is not that complicated. Um, it's actually not that complicated. Because the, the key is to know who will be resurrected. Only those who die. <laughs> it, uh, you know what? We don't contemplate that because we never actually had to think about it. But who will be resurrected? Those who, those who died. But those who did not die will even get a return with new bodies. Because that's a, that's a key principle. The, the real body will return and we will get real bodies and we will be um, uh, resurrected um, with Christ. And um, if you go look at the resurrection of Christ, because in there lies the, the meat of this teaching, is we have to go look at the proof of his resurrection. Do we actually have proof of his resurrection? And uh, Dr. Frost has gave you those scriptures. I'm just going to mention those scriptures on the proof of, of Jesus' resurrection. Matthew 28, 9. Uh, maybe someone that's noted them down can type them for us in the, in the chat box. Matthew 28, verse 9. Luke 24, verse 15, 36, 39, 41 to 46. Luke 24, 15, 36, 39, 41 to 46. And 1 Corinthians 15, verse 4 to 8. Because that's the resurrection of Christ. Those are the scriptures that take us back to the physical proof that Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead. And then the importance of his resurrection. 1 Corinthians 15, and you might just as well read the, the complete 1 Corinthians 15, verse um, 13 and, and, and onwards, um, because in there, 1 Corinthians 15 from verse 13 onwards, in there lies the importance of his resurrection. And then Romans 1 verse 4, his deity, his deity shown through and is declared in his, uh, his resurrection declared his deity. And um, we need to just look at these scriptures. And there's just two more that I want to discuss or talk about now. Then I will continue with the discussion. And his, his, his resurrection declares certain judgment. Certain judgment. Acts 17 verse 31. And then the last one there is his resurrection declares the greatness of God's power available to us. Ephesians 1, 18 to 20. And that is the resurrection of Christ. Now, you and I should always make sure that Christian, Christians understand the resurrection of Christ. Why? That is the thing that sets him apart. The resurrection of Christ is the, the one thing that sets him apart from any other person or persons that they always want to compare him to. Any other godly or prophets or whatever people they, they refer to. And that's the key. And that's the resurrection of Christ. Because for you and I, our discussion about Christ, our discussion about the actual realness of Christ lies in his resurrection. And that is the, the one part that sets him apart from any, any of the other prophets, so-called prophets that they talk about. And we just need to understand that. Because if we, need, if we understand that, it is an easy topic to discuss, and it's an easy topic to, to discuss in a small group because that's a foundation. And if people understand that part of the foundation, they will understand Christ, and they will understand um, the power of him. And the order of resurrection is um, important, and um, the order of resurrection is always Christ first because his resurrection was the first fruit. The first resurrection, 1 Corinthians 15, 23. 
and then all Christians that will be um, resurrected, and then those who are left behind. Because it's imperative that we know that Christians will be resurrected, but those who are left behind, what will happen to those who are left behind? Because they will also be resurrected. They will also receive a new body. Why? Because they need that body to be condemned forever. And just remind, uh, I just remind you of what Dr. Frost just said. How, what a sad case it is for them to be resurrected in a spiritual body and then be condemned forever. Because in there, and, and I'm not a fire and brimstone pastor, and um, we are not threatening people with hell, and that's why we want them to convert. We are telling people the truth, and we give people the truth so that they can make an informed decision. And the informed decision is, Lord, this is what I want. I want the resurrected body. I want to one day be resurrected with Christ. I want one day when I live out in this life, live into the next life with you. Because the moment I die, I'm in heaven. Until the, re the resurrection. Until the day that Jesus is coming and we are resurrected. Remember, the day that you accept Jesus Christ, you have a new, you're a new being. You're a new person. And you and we always need to understand, understand that. I am a new person. I'm now living in this world, but I'm not from this world. I'm still in this world, but I'm not from this world. Because now I'm part of the body of Christ. And um, I think um, if we just have those, those little those little points are the, the key points. If we just understand them, the others will will follow and, and come because we all work towards attain the, to attain the resurrection from the dead, Philipp, Philippians 3.11. Attain the resurrection um, uh, from the dead because that's what we work for. Get a heavenly body, 2 Corinthians 5.1 and 2. 2 Corinthians 5.1 and 2. Get a heavenly body. That's why we do what we do. That's why we follow Christ. But why do we talk to other people about this? Why do we tell other people? Because we want other people to experience this as well. We want to have a whole pavilion, a faith pavilion one day with us in heaven. We want a whole faith pavilion of people that's in heaven because of our contribution, because of the little that we've, that we've done. And that's the, that's the key. You and I have the opportunity to do a little while we're on this earth, to assist and help people to understand this. And um, the last part that I'm going to say tonight with regards to facilitating um, this topic, whenever we do this topic in or previously in, in small groups, whenever we've done this topic, we've made this a fun and a light evening. We don't make it a heavy evening. And we start with telling people, why, asking people, why are you a Christian? Why are you following Christ? And we allow people and we take time. We, we take five, ten minutes on getting people to get excited. Why do we follow Christ? Why do we follow Christ? Why are we followers of Christ? Why do we tell people about um, Christ? And we get all the different answers and people to discuss all the different things. And then we start talking about resurrection from the dead. And we get the people to participate in it. Why? It is something that we should talk about more. It is something that's not talked, enough, talked about enough because that is the crown. That is... That is where we're going. That's what we're working towards. Because we know once that happened, we will live in the eternal life forever. And we will have a resurrected body, a new spiritual body. And um, as Dr. Frost said, there might be something in there that people will be able to say, this is you. Um, but I know for me, there's going to be a lot of change. But it's cool. Um, but I look forward to that day. And I trust that you look forward as a Christian you look forward to that day as well. So I'm going to open the, the, the mics and I'm going to say if there's someone that would like to comment or um, say something with regards to this subject, um, I just want to again say that I think for us in, a, in our small group and in um, uh, what we have experienced in our small groups over the years, this has always been one of the most fun topics, most topics that, or e topic that easiest go into two, three, four different sessions. 
because people go away, they go read the, the different scriptures, they come back and we discuss it again. And next week we, we prepare something different, but when the people come back, we discuss that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we, we will have fun when we get to Revelation. Um, let's uh, let's uh, stick with the topic for tonight, um, resurrection from the dead. And uh, let's get this under the belt. And let's get this and the, the scripture verses with this um, under the belt. And um, start talking to a few people about this. Uh, get people to understand that this is the reason that we do what we do. This is the reason that we that we are following Christ. Uh, this is our main focus, our main reason. And what do we have to achieve until we get there? Get as many people to follow Christ, because that's the key. Get as many people to follow Christ be, before we we get there, and um, so that we have a, a pavilion of of um, uh, people around us, clouds of witnesses around us. So thank you for being on the school tonight. I bless you. Have a, an amazing evening.